Welcome back to Daily Devoted. My name is Bishak Canyon. Thanks for joining me. Today we're looking at Acts chapter 24, verses 1, all the way through verse 21. Uh, this is the story about Paul standing before Felix uh, at Caesarea. And so Paul, he's been in court a whole lot. You know, the other day, uh, a friend of mine, I guess he, he got uh, called for jury duty. And me and my wife were looking at each other like, man, we have never been on jury duty, you know. I, I guess fortunately, all I have in my mind are the uh, the Law and Order episodes, and I'm sure jury duty is nothing like that. So I hope I I never have to serve on jury duty. But anyways, that's beside the point. Paul's been in court a whole lot, so he's been standing in front of judges. He's been hearing accusations, and in this passage, he has to hear another accusation. And I just I again I have one point to raise, and it's it's about how Paul responds to the accusation. First of all, the accusation in and of itself is pretty hilarious. Let me let me read it to you. It, it has lawyer speak written all over it. My apologies to any any attorneys that might be listening to this. But here's what a man named Tertullus uh, said to accuse Paul, beginning at verse two. Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, since through you we enjoy much peace, he's talking to Felix, and since by your foresight, most excellent Felix, reforms are being made for this nation, in every way and everywhere we accept this with all gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you in your kindness to hear us briefly. First of all, if he wanted to be brief, he didn't have to kiss up like he did uh, just now, right? He goes on to say, for we have found this man a plague. Now he's talking to Paul. Uh, or he's talking about Paul, one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world and is a ringleader of, of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, but we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to find out from him about everything of which we accuse him. Well, first of all, if you are, uh, if you have a listening ear, a keen ear, you'll notice that Tertullus didn't actually accuse Paul of anything specific. He accused him of being the ringleader. He accused him of, of profaning the temple. So maybe that is the accusation, but he didn't really get into the details. And so now Paul has an opportunity to speak. And as we've seen from Paul, whenever he has a chance to speak, what's he going to speak about? This is my Dora the Explorer blinking moment where I ask you questions and it's uncomfortable for me as you seek an answer. What's Paul going to speak about whenever he gets a chance to speak? The answer is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you got that answer, then um, put your name in the uh, in the comment section and I will be grateful for you. So Paul's given a chance to speak. And when he speaks, what he does is make sure that Felix understands that the reason that he's put on trial isn't for anything other than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In verse 21, he says, or let me start at verse 20 or no, verse 21. Other than this one thing that I cried out while standing among them, it is with respect to the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you this day. So he wants he wants Felix to know. All these accusations that Tertullus and the other um, Jerusalem leaders are making, it's respect to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm a God-fearing Jew, but I'm preaching about this man, Jesus Christ, who's come into the world, who rose from the dead, and because of him, we're all going to have life in his name. I, I just think it's, it's so um, inspiring. And it's so instructive. Paul is on mission. Remember what God said to him in 23 verse 11, that you're going to go to Rome and you're going to speak about the facts about who I am. And Paul, he understands his purpose. And that purpose has led him to take advantage of every opportunity he receives to speak about God, to talk about the resurrection, to point other people to Jesus in as many ways as, as possible. And I'm, you know, it's just it's just compelling to me. It's just compelling. And it's it inspires me and encourages me to stay on mission because we have a mission, too. I find it easy to be distracted from that mission, but we have a mission, too. And this encourages me to see every opportunity that I'm placed in as a chance to stay on mission and to further the mission of the kingdom of God 
uh, to do my small part and for you to do your small part in taking advantage of the opportunities we have to bear witness to Jesus Christ. So may God help us. May the Holy Spirit be with us as we do that. Heavenly Father, as you are with Paul, be with each and every one of us for your sake, for the salvation of the world, we pray. Amen.